but the shoulder in particular, it's probably one of the most mobile joints in the body. And with the shoulder, a lot of times people just think, okay, well, they think shoulder, they're thinking really the head of the humerus and where it is in the scapula. And while yes, a lot of movement comes from there, a lot of movement comes from the scapula as well. It's basically a two to one ratio. For every degree that the humerus, the head of the humerus moves up, the scapula moves half a degree. And so in order to get that 180, 180 degrees from the arm going up to going down, as you can see there, the scapula is moving 60 degrees worth of that, and the head of the humerus is moving 120 degrees of that. So the, the scapula being able to slide back and forth in a lot of directions, you can see all the directions it is going to be going from elevation, depression, adduction, abduction, upward rotation. All of that enables the actual shoulder joint, the head of the humerus there, to move a lot and to stay stable because they're moving in symmetry. So you can see now how if we have upper cross syndrome, this is probably going to be <laughs> affecting that because you can see there the back is rounded, the lower traps are getting weak, the serratus anterior is weak, or, and or the upper traps are also tight. So now you can think of just the tension that's on that scapula almost just frozen into place. So if the scapula can't move, that can mean one of two things is going to happen. Either you are going to have less range of motion in a very easy way at the shoulder, and or it's gonna cause more stress on the head of the humerus, therefore we're getting the shoulder pain from athletes. So you can hopefully see how the posture overall then relates to the actual movement of joints and muscles in the body, and then is gonna affect certain categories of exercises more than the other. So we really wanna be aware of this. And again, swimming is always gonna push them towards upper cross syndrome, but we can use dry land to combat that, especially in the pulling category. So, but with the pushing category, one way that we can help just educate the athletes about this and, and help do as much as we can in the pulling phase, even though it's not as much as the pulling, or in the pushing phase, as much as the pulling phase is this term called shoulder packing. So if you can see here, the muscles in the back, upper trapezius, middle trapezius, and the rhomboids in particular, what that's able to do is engage that shoulder blade back and have then the head of the humerus be in a much more stable position. And this is helpful because then it's gonna lessen the stress on the actual head of the humerus and the small muscles around it, your sits bone, your sits muscles, excuse me. So it's basically the muscles that make up the rotator cuff. And so when we pack in the shoulder, that means retracting the scapula back and really feeling like that sunk in, for any pushing or even pulling exercise, we'll talk about that in the pulling category as well, that's gonna help swimmers. So even if they are in an upper cross syndrome pretty bad, as much as you can help them understand, hey, pack the shoulder in, try to drop your shoulder blade down, depress it, squeeze it back. Now the head of the humerus, the actual shoulder joint is in a much more stable position. So even if they're compromised posturally, at least you're coaching them the best way they can to get in a position that's going to be the safest way. So you can see how the X there, she's really just letting her shoulder go all over the place. Whereas the check mark, you can see it's much more packed in and the shoulder is gonna be in a much safer position. So this works for the horizontal as well as the vertical. So you can see on the right side of the screen in the middle there, he's just totally relaxed in his shoulders, they're coming up and therefore the scapula is sliding up and over the rib cage, putting the head of the humerus in not the safest position and there's gonna be a lot more stress on that actual joint there. Whereas on the left, on the far side of the slide, you can see that his shoulders are packed in, shoulder blades are depressed, he's probably pulling together back and it's in a much more stable position. So no matter if you're doing vertical movements or horizontal movements, you wanna encourage your athletes to have that shoulder packing position. And again, a lot of you probably don't even think about this with pull-ups. All right, jump up on the bar and they start in this position as opposed to engaging and now we're gonna go. And even though it's a really little thing, it may take a lot of time to coach athletes to that because they really have to think about it. And especially if they're already in kind of an upper cross syndrome, they're gonna have to doubly think about it because they're already, you know, the body's already trying to do this. So they're gonna have to really think about getting those shoulder blades back down and together. But 
Shoulder packing, no matter what type of movement you're doing in the pushing category, vertical or horizontal, is always going to put the athlete in a safer position. So no matter if they're way in an upper cross syndrome or not, it's just gonna be better overall for the shoulder. And again, with dryland, we don't wanna have injuries on land. We're actually doing it to prevent injuries in the water especially and keep them in the water. So why not just put the shoulder in a better position to keep the athletes safe?